प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह गणेशम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker toward liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. You know, for the past couple of weeks, we've been discussing topics regarding Sump or unity, nonetheless, words that can have great action upon others, nonetheless, question answers, and so on and so forth. But today's topic has to do with every single one of us. It's such an element that everyone needs to possess in order to get the Rajipo or the happiness of Bhagwan, Ekantik Satpurush, Santo, and Bhakto. This particular subject that will be introduced is something that is so important that in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Divine Vachnam Rudkadada, middle chapter 25, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that whoever has such an inclination for this particular topic, one's antakaran's pap or sins become destroyed. That's how strong of a spiritual endeavor this topic is. So let's take a look at the presentation topic for today. Today's presentation topic is seva. A four-letter word that can do so much that one can attain atyantik kalyan or ultimate liberation. If we think about it, there are three particular elements that are main foundation in the satsang fellowship. One is understanding or samjan. Two is maima or understanding the glory of Bhagwan, his santo and bhakto. And three is daspanu, or we can say form of servitude. Today, for number three, a form of servitude or daspanu is something that is such a foundational element that without this element, it can be said that one is incomplete. So let's take a look, all of those youths who are watching, all of those adults who are watching, all of those kids who are watching, that how can I attain this particular element? Nonetheless, practical examples in the life of Ekantik Satpurushas that will show us and guide us in this particular fashion. Let's take a look. Now, the number one question is, who wants to be great? When this question is asked, number one, everyone says, I do. I is the very first letter or word that pops into our mind. Because each and every human has a base nature, which is to acquire some kind of egotism. Each and every human who has a body on this earth, Bhagwan has instilled this particular, you can say DNA, and due to that, everyone has this kind of, you can say, expectation 
that, yes, I want to be great. But there is a lot of types of greatness. There are so many types of greatness that in the world, people strive after them. Now, the world is a big place. There's a lot of job opportunities, a lot of statuses in the world. So much so, much wealth and much finance. Many, many businesses and trade and politics that the world is continuously engaged in these particular topics that I just pointed out. Now, these topics that revolve around our life in one way or another, may it be finance, may it be politics, may it be our job, may it be our status in the world, may it be our luxurious home or our luxurious cars or our very fancy clothes, may it be the opposite gender, may it be anything, but people in the world determine their greatness off of these particular topics. People in the world feed off of these particular topics and due to that, their cycle of life and death does not stop. Their cycle of life and death continue onwards because one has found some kind of greatness or understood one uh, some kind of greatness in these particular fields now the element at hand is greatness in satsang yes how is that obtained how can one obtain that that's what we're going to look at today i pointed out five topics five fields and there's much more, but these are the main that the world is particularly striving forward. But in satsang, how can one become great? Because the main question is, who wants to become great? And everyone in, the, in their mind, some way, some percentile, some maybe 10%, some may be 50, some may be 75, and some may be 100% very, very determined to become great. And each and every person has some kind of mindset that if I do this, I will become great. If I become a doctor, then I will become great. If I study very, very well and get into this particular university, I will become great. If I have this job, I will become great. If I have this amount of money, I will become great. Such kind of expectations and such kind of bars are set mentally in our mind. And for that, we strive very, very hard to work towards that very particular goal. Because the end question is, I want to be great. But the greatness in this world, and this is a reality, may we understand it today or we, may we understand it before our life ends or may we never understand it. But the greatness of this world will only stay on this world. The greatness in this world will only stay on this world no matter how long you live. May we live 70 years, may we live 80 years, may we live 90, 100, 110, maximum 120. The average life expectancy of a human on earth, depending on its country, but is about approximately 75 to 80 years of age. Now, saying that, if we start from the beginning, once we're born, we're introduced to our family, we're introduced to school, we're introduced to the environment, and 
may it be the sanskars of our past, the impressions of our past life, or may it be the impressions of this particular life, may it be our parents feeding us such a certain kind of knowledge that we think that if I become a lawyer, I will become great. If I have a very high financial bank account status, then I will be considered great. If I go into politics, I will become great. If I get good grades, I will become great. All of these different kinds of thoughts are inside of our head. Now from that, we grow up and we actually pursue our goal and we actually obtain our goal. And from there, we start our life with a family, a home, and new bars are set again. That if I have this kind of house, if I live in this kind of society, it just goes on and on and on. And finally, when we get the, at the age of 60 or 70, that all kind of starts to diminish. And we don't really think about that anymore. But we more think about the people who we love. How long will they stay with us? How long will we stay with them? All these thoughts occur. And then at the age of 80 or however God wants to keep us, how much ever age, we call it a life and that's it. Now this is an average human's mentality and perspective towards life. This is a person's perspective in the world, a person who lives in the world, who is not a satsangi, who does not know about Bhagwan Swami Narayan, who does not know about getting out of the cycle of life and death. I just put forward one perspective. Now this presentation topic is based off of seva or service. Regarding that, let's take a perspective of satsang. How can one become great in satsang? What is the way one can become great in satsang? Well, I got first a small video for you of students in the Gurukul in India, or Gurukul meaning a school in India, where they're taught to particularly instill this very element in their life. Let's first take a look here. Now, these are boys that are just, you know, sweeping the streets of India. As you can see, there is much, much rubbish, garbage, yet their inclination they're also told to do seva but their inclination to do this seva as you can see it's not properly maintained and you can't you can't see say that it's the best hygiene but as we can see that by the inspiration of the guruji the guru teaches how to do seva and how a, per, uh, how a citizen of the one Swami Narayan and society should behave and should react. Now, this particular video was very short and you just saw kids sweeping. Now, kids sweeping, that's one thing. That's the perspective of a world. A person who is a non-satsangi. But... A person who is a satsangi of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, once looking upon that particular act of these kids, one should completely go into the mode of seva. Something that Bhagwan likes, something that I should do, something that is, should be revolving around my life. But it doesn't end there. And not only can one particularly grasp this element just offing just off of watching a video of kids sweeping but moving on to this slide seva kare te meaning the one who does seva is mota mota meaning great this is now bhagwan swami narayan's perspective bhagwan swami narayan's whole philosophy was based off of daspanu or a mode of servitude. Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself, when he came on this earth, 
he displayed this inclination very much in his life when he was baby Gansham and when he was roaming the streets of Chapaya in Ayodhya when he became Nilkan Verni and gave alms to the people in vil particular villages when he came to lodge and met Muktanan Swami and by the by the command of Sadguru Ramanan Swami he was told to embrace a pillar and Nilgan Verni embraced a pillar meaning stayed underneath the commands of Sadguru Muktanan Swami Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself the Supreme Lord of Lords stayed under the commands of Muktanan Swami by the commands of Ramanan Swami his Guru and he served in lodge he sweeped the floors of the ashram he collected cow dung he cooked for the santos he washed clothes of santos he did so much seva that from his particular act all of the santos became inspired by his divine aura Bhagwan Swami Narayan did this very act and then he he became Sajanan Swami and then he did so much seva for society that today if a person who is not a satsangi just looks at the biography biography of Bhagwan Swami Narayan what works he has done on this earth how he has done done it and in what time span he has done it then a person of the world would definitely say that no human can do this task no human can do such kinds of tasks in short period of time of building six temples himself with the guidance of his santos nonetheless initiate over 2000 santos in the sampradaya in that time particularly in such a short i want to say expectingly maybe 30 years of time even shorter than that 28 years of time nonetheless making over two thousand two million followers writing the shiksha putri talking and the vachnamrut is being compiled by his sadguru santos and performing divine charitras and taking many many to akshar dham and performing samadhi prakaran so on and so forth bhagwan swami Narayan showed and displayed in his life proving that he is supreme and beyond any other incarnation nonetheless the inclination of seva seva kare te mota meaning the one who does seva is great but how can that seva be done we come to mandir we vacuum we sweep the floor and is that how we consider ourselves to do seva what vision is Bhagwan Swami Narayan expecting us to do seva in Mandir? What vision is the Ekantik Satpurush expecting us to do seva in Satsang? That is the vision that we have to attain, not the vision of our mind. And how can that be attained? Bhagwan Swami Narayan has stated in his Vachnamrut. That's the vision we have to reach. In the Vachnamrut Garuda middle chapter 25 that I mentioned previously, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says that whoever has such an inclination like Uka Khachar, one's mind's sins will be burned away. Now, Uka Khachar, what kind of seva inclination did he have? Uka Khachar would wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning. What would we be doing at 3 a.m. in the morning? Nonetheless, what would we be doing as kids in this vacation time, in this summertime at 10 a.m. in the morning or 11 a.m. in the morning? Uka Khachar would wake up 3 a.m. in the morning and from Gadara to the Gela River, it's approximately a kilometer to a kilometer and a half. There's a pathway that is specially made so the santos would wake up and go from Dada Khachar's Darbar in Gadara to the Gela River for snan, for taking a bath. 
But that road has thorns, small rocks that are very jagged and sharp that may hurt the santos. Now, Ukakachar thought that my santos, such kind of feeling, my santos would get hurt because they walk bare feet. Santos in that time were commanded not to wear anything on their feet. So Santos would wake up and go in the morning where it would be still be dark at 4 a.m. And my Santos would become hurt. So Ukakachar would sweep that floor, that whole pathway in the morning at 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. in one hour time span before Santos woke up. And he would sweep it every single day. Not one day would he miss it. And then he would, he would shower, wash the clothes of santos, do his puja, wash the clothes of his santos, wash utensils. The, the whole day would consist of doing seva. When one seva ended, he would go to the next. Such kind of an inclination Ukhakacha had. And due to that, Bhagwan Swami Narayan mentioned, in, mentioned him in the Vachnamrut. His name was etched in eternity, forever. Uka catchers. Imagine what level of feeling, what level of emotion, what level of, 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 of spiritual, spirituality Uka catcher must have had in order for him to his name to be mentioned by Bhagwan Swami Narayan in the Vajnamrut. That's the level that we have to reach. If we reach it, if we do not reach it, that's another thing. That's Bhagwan's wish. But definitely we should have an aim that I want to have a certain inclination like Uka Khachar in order to do Seva. Sadguru Gunati Tanan Swami. Sadguru Gunati Tanan Swami was the Mahant or the head of Junagad Mandir for 40 years. 40 years he was the mahant now as a mahant you have to handle and manage the financial part of the temple you have to manage and upkeep the grounds of the temple the temple itself the infrastructure making new buildings so on and so forth uh, talking with people you have to do the whole thing and when it comes to a certain mandir or a temple, that anyone would have to contact that particular person because that person has the responsibility of the whole temple. Gunati Tanan Swami, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Paramhans, out of the 500 Nan Santo, Swami stayed the Mahant, the head of Junagad Mandir for 40 long years. And Swami did not just sit on a chair or a Vyaspit and just command everyone, hey, do this, do that. But Swami's whole life was centered around Seva. Ever since he was young, before he became the head of Junagad Mandir, there's a prasang of Bharaj wanted to go to Vartal from Gadada. Uh, for Rangotso, and there was 18 santos who were sick. 18 santos who were sick, and every sant there wanted to go with Maharaj to attend the Rangotso. Who wouldn't? Rangotso, Bhagwan would throw colors on everyone. How great would that be that one would enjoy Rangotso with Bhagwan? But these 18 santos needed catering. These 18 santos needed to be fed. These 18 santos needed their medicine to be given time to time. And who would do this seva? Sadguru Gunati Tanan Swami was sitting in the back. And he saw that each and every sant had a very strong desire to go to Vartal with Maharaj for the Rangotso. So Gunati Tanan Swami himself said, Maharaj, I volunteer myself to serve, feed, and wash the clothes of these santos until you come back. 
Maharaj became so happy and said, okay. But what happened was Maharaj gave the vision to Gunatita and Swami and whatever Rangotso act, whatever Maharaj was doing during that Rangotso, Gunatita and Swami could see, just like how we can see this projector from here to here. Gunatita and Swami could see the whole Rangotso due to Maharaj's grace and Rajipo of staying behind and serving the Santos. When Maharaj came back, Maharaj hugged Gunatita and Swami 19 times, 18 for serving each Sant and 19th for himself. That's how much pleased Bhagwan Swami Narayan became on Gunatita and Swami. After Maharaj went to Akshardham, before Maharaj went to Akshardham, Maharaj gave this position to Gunatita and Swami of staying the Mahant and head of Junagad Mandir, and then Bhagwan went to Akshardham. And Gunatita and Swami served at the Mandir. There's this particular prasang I would like to tell you about Swami. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. But one time, Swami had completely uh, tied his dhotu up, and he was very, very much, you know, uh, dirty. Why? Because he was sweeping the floors and, and the, the front lawn of the Junagad Mandir. If a particular person came there, would he say that this is the Mahant or the head of the Mandir? No. He was not recognizable. And this one Jain Mahant, a Jain Mahant from another organization and another religion came there to meet Gunatitan and Swami. Now Gunatitan and Swami is sweeping and this Mahant came and said, Hey, Sadhu, where is the head of this temple? I would like to meet him. Where is the Mahant of this temple? I would like to meet him. Gunatitan and Swami smiled and he kind of dusted his hands off and he said, Please go and sit there. Sadhu, meaning he pointed to the area where Gunatita and Swami sits. The Mahant will be there shortly. Gunatita and Swami did not say, I am the Mahant, I am the head, I am great. How could he say this? But he kindly and gently and peacefully replied in such a manner that the Sadhu went and sat down. Approximately five years Minutes later, when Swami was done sweeping, Swami himself went to the Sant Asram bathroom, washed off his feet, his hands, washed his mouth, uh, face and everything. He, he fixed his whole attire and went to his seat in that office area and sat down with the Mahant. The Mahant again asked, where is the head of the mandir? And Gunatita and Swami at that time said, You're looking at him. And right there and then, the sadhu completely teared up. He said, You're the mahant? Swami said, I am the mahant of the mandir. How can I help you? Well, whatever reason that Jain sadhu came to visit Swami was completely forgotten by the Jain sadhu. And he was engrossed in Swami's aura because he thought to his head that how could a Mahant be sweeping the grounds of the temple and just five minutes later be sitting here? How can a Mahant do this? How could a great person, how could the head of a Mandir do this? He had never seen it in his religion or, or wherever he lived. It was not possible for his mind to grasp in any way. Yet, Gunatitan and Swami did this particular task. Saying that, we can see that Seva Kare Te Mota. In Gunatitan and Swami's life, he was considered great not because of his position of being that Mahant of Junagad Mandir, not because he had particularly had a mandal of 400 sadhus. In his mandal, he had 400 sadhus. 
he was not considered great due to that. Gunatitan Swami was not considered great due to financially handling the mandir properly and building great temples. But Gunatitanan Swami was considered great due to his dasatva or due to his servitude, due to his seva. And those who are das can do seva. Those who are humble can do seva. Those who want to please Maharaj Guruji, Santo and Bhakto can do seva. And Gunatitan Swami served his whole life. In the scriptures it is said that one of the characteristics of a mukta or liberated soul of Bhagwan Swami Narayan is his daspanu or his dasatva. Off of that, how much ever how much ever more one has daspanu, he is that much great. According to the Vatsnamrut Gadara, first chapter fifty eight, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says the best and greatest way to become a firm devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan is to become the das of everyone, is to serve everyone, and to have the understanding everyone is superior to me and I am inferior. Even if one has all the skills, even if one has better skills than everyone, even if one has more intellect, even if one can do much more than another person, one still needs that understanding that I am the smallest and everyone else is the greatest. Everyone else is beyond me, superior, and I am inferior. Such kind of understanding initiates and triggers this daspanu inside of one's soul. It initiates and triggers such kind of humble nature in one's life while one is talking, while one is walking, while one is doing any action, this certain invisible rope in the form of daspanu or a form of seva is intertwined. And those who are satpurushas can definitely see this factor. Moving on. The Ekantik Satpurusha's Seva. Arpuji Guruji, his practical life is beyond comprehension of a mere soul or even a great soul to understand the level of Daspanu Guruji possesses. Now, as you are able to see in this video right here, this is Loyadam, India. And this is particularly one of the borders of the whole mandir boundaries. And Puja Guruji himself is, you can see, taking a, a shovel and shoveling. And not for any kind of video, not to show anyone. There is no one around in that time. Not to do anything, but his life itself proves that he is a das. He is an Anadi Mukta. His life itself shows that he has this inclination of serving. His life shows that if one went there and a uh, uh, non satsangi that didn't recognize Puja Guruji and went there and asked that where is the Mahant, would they be able to tell that yes, this is the Mahant? No. Guruji lives a life which is hidden. Hidden in the way where when it comes to pointing out who is the great head, he will hide. But when it comes to pointing out there is some seva needed, can, can you help me? He will raise his hand first and say yes. Guruji has cleaned up the vomit of Gurukul students. Guruji has has wash the clothes of Gurukul students. Guruji has helped the injured. Guruji has helped so many people in his life that just off of this video, we can prove that Guruji's life is the life of a sevak or a das. Nonetheless, 
As we see in this video, Ganesham Maharaj of Goyatam, India, which Guruji has performed Abhishek himself, and there is many, many circles around to help, but he himself is, is taking a screen and, and completely, you know, pushing the water towards the gutter lines uh, in the back of uh, the Siyasan. Guruji does not need to do this yet. He is on his knees. If we look at this, he is the idol of Seva. This is a very, very old photo, maybe 20 years old, where he is in the cow pen, the goshara, raking the hay for, you know, for the cows. So we looked at Sadhguru Gunati. We looked at first Bhagwan Swaminarayan's life. We looked at Sadhguru Gunati Tanan Swami's life, and we looked at Puja Guruji's life. Based off of this, we can understand that those who are great perform seva. Nonetheless, only those who are great can perform seva. It's, it goes hand in hand. But sometimes in Mandir, what happens is that when we practically come here to Mandir, we see that there is a certain bhagat that has computer seva where he all he has to do is sit and put in submit reports print things out so on and so forth there's nurse another person who is sitting and writing there's another book though who gets to sit and sing kirtans on the mic everyone can hear there is a person who gets to control the audio mixer the cameras the video mixer the computer and there's bhaktos that also vacuum, also sweep, and also serve Hari Bhaktos. Now, there's this particular kind of mentality that one has that only those who do the computer work or the video work or singing seva, those are more greater people than those who serve, or those who vacuum, or those who particularly do those very menial, menial, small sevas. A certain mentality is definitely in the air. But according to Bhagwan Swaminarayan's perspective, all seva is equal. Whether you wash the dishes in the kitchen, uh, mandir, or whether you you, you you sit on the computer and run the finance of the temple. Whether you vacuum the floor or you sing a kirtan. It does not matter. It's not about who's being highlighted. But it's all about the bhav or the emotion. Now, sometimes we there's haribhaktos that I see particularly organizing the shoes and chumples of Haribhaktos. When they come in, Haribhaktos kind of leave their chumples and shoes in a very disorganized fashion. But there's Haribhaktos that particularly see this and they start to put them in the rack properly, start to organize in a line fashion. And based off of that, people may see this, people may not. But that person's bow or emotion is so high that Bhagwan will accept that person's bow or emotion first over a person who thinks that I do this seva so you know I have a certain kind of status that's not Bhagwan Swaminarayan's vision and Bhagwan or the Satpurush is looking at the emotion behind each and every seva Bhagwan and his Ekandik Satpurush is looking after the intention of each and every seva may it be mopping the floor may it be washing the dishes or may it be doing something like singing kirtans on the mic while the video is on you or may it be doing this katha or may it be anything Maharaj and his ekantik satpurush are always looking at the intention behind that action that each and every individual is doing and off of that points credit reputation 
status is built in the mind of the Ekantik Satpurush and Bhagwan, not the world. Credit, reputation, status, all these words, they're more inclined towards the world. But in satsang, all those words can only be accredited or can only be connected or can only be counted for when it goes through the processing machine of Maharaj and the Ekantik Satpurush. The processing machine or the minds of the people of the world, may they think that this person is great due to this or may they think that this person is great due to that, is only temporary and will not last. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Ekantik Satpurush's filtration system is so strong and so equipped that they can filter out and weed out the intentions of each and every soul without any kind of device at the same time, according to Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami's Vato. Or simply, it is called antaryami panu or simply omniscient powers such kind of display is done only by maharaj in his ekantik satpurush and they can see each and every person's intention so one point to definitely take is that when coming to mandir do not consider or do not differentiate between highs and lows of seva and number two have a pure intention to please Bhagwan, his Ekantik Satpurush, Santo, and Bhakto without any kind of intentions. When that is done, then may you do just one particular small action compared to a very, very great feat. Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush will become happy on that person who has done a small feat. That is how strong this spiritual endeavor is. Nonetheless, we have certain Hari Bhaktos, certain Hari Bhaktos' sons who are three, four, five year olds who are training for this certain element, who are being trained to hold this element of servitude that I would like to show you here particularly. Here in Loya Dham, Every month on Hari Jainti, we do Mahapuja. Tomorrow is Hari Jainti. But on this particular Hari Jainti, about approximately a year or two year, two ago, Mondu Bhagat is a very, very devout Hari Bhagat in our Mandir. And his son, his name is Jeet Bhagat. He is right there standing there. His son is so inclined to do Seva that as you are seeing here, the Mahapuja setup is going on and he is fixing each and every cloth for Bhagwan and putting Bhagwan's murti there without anyone telling him to do so at the age of three. If you are watching this, I would like you to give him a round of applause while sitting there on your couches. Because this Bhagat here, look at him go one by one giving not looking if uh, not looking if if a video is being recorded he doesn't know anything about that but more so he is looking at, at i want to do seva he is he has such an intention nonetheless on stage santos sit there and do mahapuja and there he you can see setting up the cloth here and he is he is there helping out uh, Swami, Nokan Swami and uh, Nimesh Bhagat, they're set up for the Mahapuja. And we can see that such kind of bhaktos are being trained in such a way to please society and to please Maharaj and Guruji and Santo. And that's all due to our Puja Guruji's vision of molding the new generation. Everything can be given to Puja Guruji because when he came here in the year of 1993 and he saw the kids he saw 
the the kishores and the elders not the elders but the young adults of this world or of, of this country without any guidance he thought it in his mind that if some, something could happen in the future then they can also lead a path that would reach them to akshardham in that particular thought sadguru sadpurushas are like chintamni have came true and due to that very very thought that base thought now all throughout not only the united states but the world various kinds of kids are being trained all due to puja guru ji's mehnat effort and all due to puja guru ji's thought of him wanting to instill sanskars and spiritual principles inside the kids and the younger generation but the end point is all for rajipo do each and every seva for rajipo may it be small may it be big but bhagwan swaminarayan is only looking at that point because according to his vachanamrut bhagwan swaminarayan says in the vachanamrut gadada middle chapter 28 in fact the only bhagwan says the only method for a person to please god is to serve devotees of god by thought word and deed bhagwan swaminarayan puts a very very strong emphasis only method to please meaning please is to attain the rajipo of god is to serve the devotees of god bhagwan did not say to only method of, to for a person to please god is to serve god but he said to serve the devotees of god by thought word and deed the kadi that we know we sing is practically here implemented in this vachnamrut hari ke das ai das tin ke das hoi kar chhad kapat kar na nash vartana shudh hoi kar bhagwan swami narayan's principles are unique bhagwan swami narayan's vision is beyond this world bhagwan swami narayan's whole perspective of looking at how one can attain akshardham ultimate liberation is completely beyond imagination of the mere soul but only due to the grace of the ekantik satpurush we can receive this vision that's why each and every loyadam parivar bhakta and each and every devotee of bhagwan swami narayan should instill this very element of seva in their life so they can attain the rajipo of bhagwan is ekantik satpurush santo and bhakto and attain the abode of akshardham saying this my humble jay swaminarayan